In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness questions asked by listeners like you. What they do is they go to our Instagram page, Mind Pump Media. They post a fitness question. We pick the best ones, and then we answer them. Now, we start the episode off by talking about current events, our lives. Oftentimes, we mention our sponsors, and we have a lot of fun. So here's the rundown of what happened in this episode. Give us the rundown. Podcast uh, of Mind Pump. So we start up by talking about my, uh, well, this morning I had an old man story. So I hurt myself a little bit, but I won the battle. Dude. You're going to have to listen to that. <laughs> this Champion. The, the beginning to find out what happened. Uh, Adam talked about how he wrestled with Justin's son and, uh, and <laughs> told him that he was stronger than Justin was. So I am getting him back yeah, for that. Terrible. Uh, we talked about the young lady who was doing naked fundraising for the fires in Australia. First off. Uh, there are lots of fires going on in Australia. This is a, like the worst fires in decades. They need lots yeah. of help. You can go and donate. I believe the Australian Red Cross is accepting donations. But there was a woman that said, hey, if you send money to the these donations I or to these uh, charities, I will send you a naked picture. She raised a lot of money. Hey, Weird, right? Good job. Justin brought up a new piece of technology, the Lexilite lamp that helps kids and people with uh, what's that? What's dyslexia. Dyslexia. Thank yeah, you very much. No Forgot problem. about that. Yeah. Uh, which not amnesia. led us to talk about some predictions. We predict that in the future, tech companies will require their employees to wear blue light blocking glasses. Now, our favorite company that makes blue light blocking glasses is Felix Gray. They make glasses that aren't super orange or red. They look good, so you don't look like a dork sitting in front of your computer. They're stylish. The prices are decent. Um, we love working with them. And we have a hookup for you. Go to Felix Gray Glasses. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get free shipping and free returns. Then we talked about the XFL. This is the new football league that's Ooh, coming they're out. they're bringing it back. Uh, Adam brought up how the Red Sox and Astros got caught cheating. That's kind of crazy. Uh, Justin talks about his recent class at an improv school. He's doing some improv stuff. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I brought up how the Golden Globes was serving purely vegan meals to all of their <laughs> virtue signaling. Could they be more pretentious? <laughs> Act, uh, 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 actor and actress friends or whatever. I talked about how the Pentagon is telling their military personnel to not do at-home DNA tests, and I have a theory around that. And then I talked about the experiment with my kids and how I'm going to give them high-protein, low-sugar, low-carb, uh, great macro-profile Magic Spoon cereal, but I'm going to put it in a shitty kid's cereal box <laughs> so they don't know the that they're eating it. The oldest trick in the book. Magic Spoon is a company that makes high-protein cereal. So you could actually have a 36-gram protein serving of cereal that tastes like kid's cereal. No joke. You're not going to believe it. It's amazing. By the way, they have this huge, uh, they have this guarantee policy. If you're not a fan of their cereal at all, you'll get a full refund. That's kind of cool. Anyway, we have a discount for you. So here's what you do. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get an automatic discount applied to your purchase. Then we got into the question answering. Here's the first question. How do you cut without ruining your metabolism? In other words, how do I get my body leaner without getting my metabolism to slow down? So we talk about strategies there. The next question, this person has wrist pain. Every time they do front squats, their wrists hurt. Maybe this happens to you. Maybe when you do push-ups or other exercises, your wrists bother you. So we talk all about wrist mobility and strengthening exercises in that part of the episode. The next question, this person wants to know if it's okay to train powerlifting, performance-type training, bodybuilding, and corrective-type exercises all in the same workout. Yeah, or, so the kitchen sink at it. Or is it better to divide it all up? So we talk about why we think it's better for most people to divide it all up. And the final question, this person says, hey, look, there's a lot of controversy surrounding a multivitamin. I eat healthy. I take a greens powder. Should I take a multi? So we talk all about uh, multivitamins, when they're valuable and when they're not valuable. Also, this month, MAPS HIT is 50% off. Now, HIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training. You might have heard of this. It's gotten a lot of press recently because it shows to burn the most amount of body fat in the shortest period of time. It's a technique and method of exercise that is phenomenal for fat burning. Now, that doesn't mean you could just do any kind of HIIT workout and get great results. We see a lot of people doing HIIT training wrong. We see a lot of programs out there that are doing HIIT training wrong. So we created a program that does it right, MAPS HIIT. In it, you use barbells and dumbbells and bodyweight exercises. There's three levels from beginner to intermediate and advanced. Utilizing the fat burning, the fast fat burning effects of high intensity interval training, but doing it the right way. So you build strength, 
Don't slow down your metabolism and don't hurt yourself. It is by far our most effective fat burning program. It's also one of the most popular ones. Here's how you get the 50% off. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code HIT50. That's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Damn, I'm so... Yeah, why well, you're walking oh, around like you got a stick up your ass? What happened? Uh, I, I, did I had an old, old good night or bad night? Uh, yeah. No, I had an old man moment today at the gym. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I went to it was a Bay Club now. They changed the name, right? Bay Club, and uh, I haven't been there in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they put two new platforms in there. Yeah, well, I saw the picture you sent over. Where's that at? <clears throat> That's in the um, down in the CrossFit kind yeah, of yeah, the great the grass area or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Bumper plates, and they got the you know Very platforms. Nice. So I'm like, oh, this is great. So now my intention <laughs> was uh, I'm going to go there today. And I'm going to go and I'm going to get connected to the muscle. I'm going to feel the squeeze. Mm. I'm going to train intelligently. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was the intention. That was Do the intention. That out the door. Yeah, it's like 6 a.m. So I walk in. I set up my, get my liquid chalk on my hands, you know, because I like that, you know, the feel of that or whatever. Got my little electrolyte drink and everything. And I'm setting up my deadlift. And uh, as I'm setting up, some 20, <laughs> probably, I don't know, 24-year-old. Oh, boy. Dude walks in. I already know where this is going. Uh-huh. You know, he's got the man bun going on and the Uh-oh. yeah, the, the hipster beard or whatever yeah. and the the, the five toed fingered. Oh god, you can't oh, let you no. can't let him outlift you. No, no. bro. So he change of plans today. Yeah. <laughs> so he, instantly he comes in and you know what's funny? You wanna know what's funny? I immediately check myself. Right away I'm like you're just gonna do your thing. Ignore, yeah. ignore the dude. Ignore the man. He'll button. probably just yeah. do like 135. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. So, and he's probably gonna do some. You know, I don't know. He's gonna do some weird exercise or whatever. So yeah. I start loading up my bar. He starts to load up his bar. Mm. I'm like, is he gonna deadlift? He's like watching you yeah. load your bar. He's it, loading. Yeah. He's going bar. like, there's a 60 yeah. year old guy next to me bro, who's it, deadlifting bro, right now. No, it gets yeah. great. Look, look at this old man. Oh, this is phenomenal. So I'm like, oh, we're gonna deadlift at the same time. Like, whatever. I'm just gonna do my my own business. So I warm up at 135. He warms up at 135. I warm up with 225, he warms up with 225. Yes. I warm up with 315, he warms up with 315. Mm. Now, at this moment, I'm listening to uh, EDM because EDM is my like. Please feel- tell me you switched that out. Bro, hold on. Okay. So, I, this is my like, I got to feel the muscles, get squeeze or whatever. <laughs> now, at this point, we're at 315, and, <laughs> and I'm, noticing, I'm noticing he's doing one more rep than me every time I warm up. So I'm like, all right. Lamb of God time. So yeah, I put yeah, yeah. a little lamb. <laughs> you gotta step it up. A little lamb of God, you know, and I start to, oh, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, old power is gonna come out. So yeah. we, we get to four plates together, right? Okay. That so man mud's lifting four plates together. So he's deadlifting, you're deadlifting, yeah. he's matching you, it's still going. Yeah. So now we get up to four plates, right? And we're pulling. Now, I'm still relative. This four plates for me is is not really a work set. Typically it's leading up to my, my heavy lifts. Although if I do reps on four plates, it's a workout. <laughs> so he pulls four, I pull four. We, this is what gets- Did you make eye contact yet? Or was this just like uh, feel peripheral? Like, I feel like you're, you know the story. Hey. So then finally we look at each other and there's an acknowledgement, a little head nod. You know, mm. like, hey, oh, yeah, what's hey, going well, on? Hey, you're, That's na- your deadlift. Yeah, you're, way, doing, you're doing some weight over there. Nice huh? So hey. this fucking kid, dude, oh my God. He looks at me and he's like, uh, wow, that's that's not bad weight. Good job. Oh, he says something to, to you. To you. Condescendingly. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, like, wow. Wow. Good. Like, th- you're uh, strong for an old man. You know wow. what I mean? You like think he was listening to mumble rap? Uh, uh, probably. <laughs> that's my guess. <laughs> probably something like that. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, you're pretty, uh, you're, burp, burp. yeah, yeah you're, that's pretty good, man. You're, you know, you're doing a good job or something like that. And I'm yeah. like, what? this motherfucker, like, this is going to get, it's going to get ugly now. So we hit the four, uh, four plates. And uh, he does, I think he does, and I, this time I wait. I'm like, I'm going to wait for him to go because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show him up a little bit. So Good. he pulls it for three. I pull it for four, put the weight down, and I'm walking around. Okay. And he goes, man. He Peacocking goes, a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. he goes, dude, you're pretty, he goes, you're pretty strong, dude. He goes, does the, does, why do you wear a belt? Because he's not wearing a belt. Oh, my God. He oh, even makes you, a belt jab. You, oh, Bro. wow. He goes, why do you wear a belt? He Bold goes, move. He goes is, it, is it like help you lift more? Yeah. I'm like this. <laughs> like, like you're wearing a belt, but you're not wearing those shoes. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, yeah. Elevated shoes. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It does. You know, it helps me a little bit. I can, I can lift a little bit more. So now I'm like, all right, motherfucker, I'm gonna go heavy now. So I put the fifth plate on. I pull that really hard. He adds a, I think he adds like a quarter 
Yeah. So he's he can't pull. He's not ready for five. No, he no. can't pull. Um, no, he, yeah, he can't do what I. No, actually, no. Before he pulls a court, so I pull five. Mm-hmm. He watches me, so he heads over to my. Uh, uh, no, this. I'm sorry. Before I pull a five, this is, it gets even better. I pull a four. He looks at me, talks shit. I'm like, oh, the belt, whatever. He goes over to my rack to grab a weight. Now there's a 45 there and a 25. He's so he, crossing lanes. So he goes because there's there's his his things out of weight. So he goes over to reach over for my plate. And I go, oh, I'm gonna need that. So he goes, oh, <laughs> he goes, oh, my bad. So he walks over yeah. and grabs a quarter. Yeah. So he puts go get a, it from the leg press. He pal. puts a quarter on his thing. So I look over and I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. So I put a 45 on. I'm like, oh, I laughed a little bit. I'm like, actually, I thought you were gonna grab the 20, the, the 45. I'm like, you could take the quarter. I'm using the 45. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now it's getting, so now it's getting hilarious. So I do a set. Then he adds a 10 to his. Yeah. So I add a quarter to mine. So now I'm at, I don't know, what is that? Five, five uh, what is that? 545 or something? Five oh, God, you're pulling this heavy today. Damn. Hey, for a day, you're supposed to be like on. working on the squeeze. Heavy, bro. I pulled heavy, right? So I add a, I add a quarter of mine. And I'm like, and I boo, boo, put it down. And I'm like, did I hurt myself? No, I'm still good. <laughs> yeah. He adds another 10 to his. I already feel like I won, but you know, this is the old man part. I'm like, you know, he's on the you ground. Want to bury him. This is the perfect opportunity now to, to step on his throat. Yeah, just yeah. kick him in the, you know, <laughs> yeah. while he's down, smash him. We're gonna we're gonna put a, an exclamation point yeah. on this, right? So right. I pull I pull the five plates plus the quarter. He's he still has a ten and you know, or twenty five and four plates or whatever. Yeah. I pull mine, I walk around and I'm feeling good, but I'm not feeling fully satisfied. Yeah. So then uh he starts to take his weights off. You know, saying, so hold on, did you mind if I use that for a drop set? I take my belt off. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> there it was. I pull his weight. Yes. Oh, it was a good time. But yeah. I did hurt myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did injure I mean, myself. That's inevitable. Yeah. So uh, you, you should have asked them, yeah. Like, like you know, how do you get the perfect spin, uh, you know, for the button? Yeah, do you use it, a pencil? Yeah, or? yeah. You can lift more if you cut your hair. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I won it, but at what cost? Yeah, you know, know. so yes. now I'm, I'm walking a You're little bit. You're hurting funny. today. Yeah, yeah, dude. I for sure. Have a slight injury oh, because of that uh, thing. I'll that, be honest, though, it's worth it though. I mean, you had to do that. That's the old man uh, story that I have for this. But it's funny when you, you, when I was younger, I remember like like wrestling with my dad or my uncles, and I remember them going a little too hard as I got bigger and stronger, mm-hmm. and I would laugh about that because I'm like, oh, you're just you know because you you don't want the younger lion or whatever. Now that's me, dude. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's me now. Where I'm like, you're not gonna beat me. Hey, talking about strength. <laughs> did I tell you the? That's why I work out at home. Did I tell you the story <laughs> that I did to Justin's son Everett while we were up in Tahoe? No. Oh, so dude. we were. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yes, yeah. you did. So we're you out. We're us. outside. We're outside. Uh, we're trying to get food uh, on a busy ass day, and everywhere we go is like an hour and a half wait or whatever. And um, we're with Courtney and Justin's kids. And I think Doug's, Doug, you're with us at that time too. I think, right? Doug, me. Yeah. We're trying to find a place to eat. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Justin remembers it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Justin's on the phone, right? Talking. Courtney's standing uh, next to her two boys. And I walk behind Everett, which I've told the story already that Everett's like Justin. He's the one that's like full of energy. And so I yeah. wrap, come behind him and I wrap my arms around him. And I squeeze him real tight and I pick him up and I shake him. And it was, it was funny because you know, when you do that with some kids, they just give in. Yeah. You, you, could, they, you know, you're obviously much bigger than they are. They overpower, but you could feel him like <laughs> giving me everything he had to get out yeah, of it. Yeah, and yeah. I like I had to bust free. Oh yeah, I had to kind of lock it in a little bit. You know, yeah. and I'm like, and he's like, he's fighting. Arr! He's trying to get out, and he's real serious to get out of it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you got some fight in you. And he's, like, <laughs> I go, just like your dad when I hold him down. <laughs> <laughs> And That's so fucking. Oh, hilarious. dude, yeah. Courtney fucking dies laughing, oh, right? And then I let him go. Kill you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it was such a great jab because Justin's on the phone. And he can't defend himself. Yeah, or something, I didn't even right? know this was happening. Right. So you know, talking shit, and yeah. uh, she uh, he runs away, and they're they're off playing. And Courtney goes, um, "Oh, that's so funny that you just you just said that." He came up to me yesterday because he'd been eyeballing me all fucking week, and he's like, "Mom, Dad, uh, um, Adam's really big." Is is he stronger than daddy? Oh, no. <laughs> so I just bust out some videos and made sure and showed him. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is your dad. This is Adam. <laughs> this is the amount of weight. Oh, God. Yeah. That's hilarious. It's close. That's my new thing, though, now. I'll be whispering in there oh, all the time, giving him shit. Dude, that's, that's evil, dude. I, like, come on, man. He, he worships me right now. Yeah. I don't want to lose that. Yeah. Little, you'll, yeah. you'll never lose it. I know. You'll never. You're, you're, no, I know. You're yeah. a god to your kids. are great. Like, I remember one time when I was little, so I I grew up with 
there were six of us boys right around the same age. We're all cousins. And um, between the six of us, we all had, there's, there's, uh, oh, there's six dads, right? So six dads, six boys. We used to all get together for family functions. And the, the, the fathers, all of our dads were young dads, right? So my dad had me when he was 20 and, and my cousins, same thing with their dad. So they're all young, you know, in their mid twenties and we're at a family party and, uh, they started arm wrestling. So they all, the dad started getting around the table and started arm wrestling. Now, we were all like, oh my gosh, let's see whose dad is the strongest. So we're around everybody. That shit almost turned into a brawl. Oh, I bet. Oh my dude. God. <laughs> so my so my dad is the, my dad and my cousin's dad, uh, who by, both of them have the same name. Their, their names are both, uh, you know, Domenico or whatever. Though they're the strongest of the of the dad. So they beat everybody. So now it's them two. So me and my cousin are both looking at each other like Z-Z. Yeah. And they were fucking going, dude. The table's shaking. People are yelling or whatever. My dad beats him. I'm like, yay, my dad's a strong. Yeah, my dad. Oh, hero. oh, dude. It was funny because his dad I had to go to him and like console him. Like, no, it's okay. You know, sometimes we lose or whatever. Like, dude, I would never do <laughs> and that. And then on the him. other side, son, we never lose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I let him win. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had to let him win. Anyway, dude. Did you guys see the, the, the are you guys getting messages from people in Australia? All the uh, fires over there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So some of the worst ever, That's right? Crazy. Yeah, and uh, they're uh, they've arrested a bunch of arsonists who started. Yeah, a lot I of heard something like th- like fifty percent of it's been from arsonists. Is I read true? an article on that. Yeah, the, there were a lot of arsonists who were setting uh, brush fires. Why? One of the worst Why? fires they've had in, in decades. What the hell is wrong with people? I don't know. But there was this uh, this social media influencer mm-hmm. girl who was sending people nude pictures of herself for donations. So ready wow. for this. She raised over seven hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> you lie. No, <laughs> dude. Are the you, power of porn. Yeah. Seven, wow. So, so oh, she mad ma- porn for good. She would tell people if you donate to this, you know, these organizations. And I know there's like the, the Australian Red Cross is a great place to donate. Mm. So if you want to help, uh, those are, that's a great place to do it. But she, uh, she she gave people nude pictures of mm. herself for, and she generated shit tons of money. That is awesome. I yeah. know. It's I so, mean, you can't hate on that. It's so fun. It makes me laugh, too. The, you want to talk about the gender pay gap. How much you guys think a guy would raise? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should try. <laughs> Dude, that. Uh, Ten try. bucks, dude. Yeah. You'd have to do the That's opposite. my guess. Yeah. yeah, donate or I'll send you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. ah. just to stop it. Yeah. Ah. Stop these from entering my DMs. I got to send this. Oh. Yeah, anyway, please. It's a, it's a good time. But yeah, so it's a crazy time over there for everybody. I know a lot of animals and stuff have died so it's kind of a you know hopefully didn't we, they get didn't we have somebody in our forum that sent over uh, a link and everything so that you can send over to donate you're gonna do that um yeah we should put that in the show notes. i know the australian red cross yeah. is, a good, is a just a big place that you can send money to help uh you know with the, the efforts so i i do get uh emails all the time still last year i went to ces you guys know what that whole event is and everything yeah. with uh yeah they do this display of all the latest technology what does ces stand for that. Yeah, I don't know. Does Consumer anybody? Electronic something. Summit, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's my guess. I don't know. But um, I mean they this is basically for companies to come in and show off, you know, like, oh, we're we have all this groundbreaking technology, all these like th- products are out that are gonna like change and innovate the whole market and all this stuff. But there was one company I saw that uh, was coming out with a pretty cool product. I think it was called Lexalite. And this is to address anybody that has uh, dyslexia. And so I guess the issue with dyslexia, so I'm not very familiar with the problem of it, other than like they they read and, and they're reading like it's almost like a mirrored effect. So you, so you read something and it's like confusing because you see, you know, <clears throat> like the same word and, and it's like hard to decipher. Yeah. So I guess this addresses that somehow because like it, both eyes are dominant where you know when you're reading whereas you need one of them to be dominant to kind of take over and keep it going interesting so, yeah so they're able to distract it with this light somehow what? to yeah it's, it's it's a trip wait a minute so it's so it's a light do you shine it on the page or do you wear like glasses or something yeah i think you shine it on the page uh i mean i'm not real like versed in the science of it but it just it, it looks really cool that they're addressing something like that that oh my god they, they can do through something like simple with with just like a reading light that is so brilliant have you guys seen those that reminds me have you guys seen those videos of those uh those gla- oh there it is right there doug just put it up oh yeah that's phenomenal yeah does it actually work, Doug? Is that what the the article says? 
I have to read the whole thing to yeah. know. Uh, what, what did the email say, Justin? That yeah, so was a, no, they've, they've done a lot of like clinical trials, and and it's backed by a lot of uh, you know like reputable science. So um, as far as what they they profess, it, it's it's already working. Wow. So yeah, it says ninety yeah, percent of them found it improved. Wow, ninety percent. That's wow. so good. You know, speaking of, speaking of of lights and eyes and reading and stuff like that, like I you know I have a prediction. We always put out things on this podcast that we predict we're going to see in the future. Future. And what I think we're going to see is the same way that like uh, welders, construction workers, like when they're using equipment, they have to wear special eye goggles, right? It's they're like, required. It's required. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I predict that we are going to see that in the tech industry for blue light blocking glasses. I, I would mark not, my words. I 100% I agree. Oh with yeah. That. yeah, I completely agree with that because the the they're they're showing pretty good evidence that it's damaging yeah. permanently. And it's, the companies want to protect themselves too. I mean, like right. think of it from a self-protective interest. You know, like I want to make sure all my employees don't come back to me later with all these like you know, lawsuits, lawsuits, and studies right. and things that prove it. So I just read an article on, along that, uh, that the lines of that where the blue light blocking type glasses, uh, the market for that is expected to grow at almost ten percent over the next four years. Yeah, which is very fast growth. Now I think that that growth is going to accelerate. I agree with you, Adam. I think. What we're seeing right now is the beginning of the hockey stick uh, of, of growth. I think it's going to continue to grow at, at, at faster and faster paces, exactly because of what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, the research is out there now, and we know, and I think that it, you're going to start seeing more and more, to Justin's point, you're going to see more and more people actually trying to sue and do shit mm. over that. They're going to be, they've been, I mean, we haven't had this, right? We haven't had people working on computers. Very, I mean, maybe we had a small percentage of the population, but we have a large percentage of the population now that, stare at computers for eight hours a day for the last two, three, four decades. Right? It's been three long decades. enough now to, you know, all the, all the, you know, ramifications of that are going to pop up. <laughs> and, and more than that, it's not that you're, that's a big part of it. But the other part of it is when you're not staring at computers, you're staring at other screens. Yeah. You're staring at TV inundated with or it. phone or tablet devices. So it's not just because if you go back you know, into the into the mid to late '90s and early 2000s, people were on computers quite a bit, especially in the Bay Area. But when they were off computers, they were done. There was no other screen except for maybe their TV. Well, and not to mention that's still only a a, a decade or two <laughs> right. decades is still not very much. I mean, what are we what are we going to see when you have somebody who's literally for 30 years of their life been staring at a screen, and then also like you're saying, coming home and looking at a high def television? So I have another prediction to add to that. So as that market grows, of course, these companies, you know, like Felix Gray, that's one of our the company we work with. Those companies are going to start to look for people to represent them and sponsor them to separate themselves. Mm. I think the perfect to combine two exploding markets. I think the perfect people to use blue lock blue blocking glasses as as like, like being sponsored. Video game uh, professionals, gamers, mm -hmm. like sports, right? Yeah. Could you see that? Like, I, I wonder if Felix has already dabbled in that. I have, you know, the next time I'm on a call with him, I'll ask if they if they're already there. I would assume that they would bro, think to go. If you're going to sponsor athletes, that would be the one. Huh? Yes, because yeah. like think about how effective athletes have been at selling anything, right? Shoes, McDonald's, you know, clothes. It's still funny to call them athletes. Yeah, let's no, be honest. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you want, competitors, right? Professional video gamer. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, but that market is exploding so fast, so fast, and the younger generation could give a shit about professional sports. Sports. They they know all the professional gamers oh, yeah. names. That's that, the new thing. That the next ten to fifteen years, those are the ones that are gonna. Those are the kids or whatever. Those are the competitors, I should say, that will be selling lots of products. And think about it. Like, can you think of a better product to combine with? Uh, no, they with literally need it. No, Absolutely. No, no. Speaking of athletes, did you guys see that XFL just released their rule book that is different than the NFL? Just like a couple days. Oh, ago. Oh yes, I'm What's glad different? you're in this. What, yeah, what is it? Yeah, What's no, so, uh, oh, there's a, there's a lot of little things that are different, but probably one of the most interesting things that I think like they're, they're like the extra point instead of just being a field goal or two, you have the option to start from the two yard, the five yard, or the ten yard, and you can get one, two, or three points. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. One of the coolest things that I think is what's way different than the NFL is uh, they're getting rid of the forward pass. So you could catch a, you what? could be a wide receiver, tight end, catch a ball, and then throw it again to somebody else. 
Wait so a minute. You Hold can on. go forward after you catch it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, so you that's can crazy. actually that's that's gonna change that's it's gonna change a lot. A crazy. Lot. Oh, it's, it's like chaos. Now, does it say how many times you could do that? Uh I did I didn't see in the rule book where if it said I know at least one more time. I don't know if there's it, they're eliminating the four pass completely and you can just keep lateraling it as much as you want. Yeah. And then it's dead if it if it goes drops or or you maybe potentially could turn the ball over then. But I know that they're they were they're eliminating the forward pass now from a receiver, so you can catch the ball and, and then throw it at least one more time, throw it forward again. You know what I like about that? Uh, because uh, that's crazy. What I like about that is you're going to see completely new strategies. Yeah, new dynamic. Gameplay. Yeah, and just like when MMA became popular, you you had things had to evolve because you start to learn different things. Imagine now, wide receivers now. They they don't throw. They never well, throw. It, right? It's going to be interesting mm-hmm. what what they do here. Obviously, uh, you know McMahon tried to do this before. I'm sure they learned from a lot of their mistakes uh, that they made the first time. They they didn't give up on it. They're doing it again. So obviously, they see the opportunity there. There's opportunity in the space. I mean, the mm-hmm. NFL pretty much has a monopoly. In the, yeah, in how that much world? did he lose? Do you know by chance, like the first time around? I, you know what? I watched that. There's a really good documentary on, I believe it's Netflix, uh, did on him that w- that went all into the XFL. That was really good, and they and they shared that on there. I don't remember uh, what it was off the top of my head, but I know the documentary gets into that. But I, you, it's going to be interesting. Any other rule? Yeah. Oh yeah, there was a, a lot of, but the rest of them. Those are, are the most popular. Yeah, those ones. those two rules that I just shared were the two that like stood out to me. That like, oh, that's going to be really different and interesting. So now, where are they going to pull players from? Obviously, currently, well, if like you're my, a top a player, Canadian league, a ton, the European yeah, my, league. My buddy, who, the yeah. kicker who didn't get re-signed, he's going over. Dude. He's going over there. There's there's a lot of people that uh, either one um, didn't get re-signed in the NFL, maybe after their third. There's year. no real minor league either. So right. It's like this is this is a great avenue, uh, dude. You realize that. That only like the one percent of you know like top top colleges even make the NFL. Yeah, like not even the one percent. So yeah. there's just there's there is such a huge pool of football players out and there that a, need you know that could make a living out of it. Exactly. There's a lot of guys that would would pay be, or we'd be willing to play for significantly less than what the NFL plays just to have an opportunity to just play to the, going. the sport. You're that still they probably going to get paid good. Are are they? <laughs> is there is their season going to be? At the same time as the NFLs, or are they going opposite? I would hope it doesn't. No, I don't think it does. I think it actually, I think it overlaps a little bit, but I think it actually runs. Yeah, that, that has to be right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what I read. Like at the same time. spring to summer. Or I mean, I'm really, cool. yeah, exactly. I think that's what it does. So I, I, and I think there was partly strategy that for them to do that actually to screw the NFL, who would be waiting for colleges that came out. Uh, the XFL will have like the first shot at them first. <sighs> So I think that's going to be interesting. An ex- yeah, no, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that comes out from this. I'm I'm watching again. You know, it's like it's got to yeah. be. Yeah, and especially too with all the new rules in the NFL, like really trying to soften the game and and make it you know more bubble taped. Like I could imagine like the XFL being the counter yeah. to that, like being like more brutal. You all know? tackling is legal. Yeah. yeah, as long as you take someone down. That's going to be interesting. Do you guys remember the the women's football league? What they call the lingerie? Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I do. Were yeah. they? You didn't remember that? The Adam? lingerie. League. I remember the the Bud Light commercials that they made. That no, was, the LFL or whatever. Yeah, no, this was an actual league tackle football. <laughs> women wearing pads, pads, but they wore makeup. Yeah, but they wore like tutus or something. No, not yeah. tutus. They wore it? like sports bras and bikini bottoms, which is bikini bottoms. So yeah. it's so condescending. It's like, yeah, you guys can play football, <laughs> but we need to see. Well, you they're half trying, naked. dude. That's the thing, though. They're trying to get eyes, you know, so they can make money. But you know, that's that was their angle. Now, here's the deal. I would, if you know, I I thought it was condescending. Like, oh, brother, you know, they're gonna play, but then they have to be half naked. But if you ever watch one of those games. They these girls fucked each other up. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I mean they were taking each other's heads off, and these chicks were built. They weren't yeah. bikini models. They were like they look no, like in college. So I I don't remember what it was called, but uh, we there there was an event where uh, all the girls on campus you would recruit for football, and and we would train them and everything for tackle football. And this was like without pads or anything, but. <laughs> Uh, powder puff league i think is what they call it <laughs> even the names are i know of right <laughs> it is but but they dude it was it was legit like they got into it they got to get aggressive and it was like it was so much fun dude well, i coached a team yeah didn't your high school do that i mean it, there was a, a powder puff game at homecoming week always and it was the juniors versus the seniors now did they wear pads or was no, it was flag, flag. Oh, it was flag, flag yeah it was flag football um and but it was it was that's a was a, it's been a tradition for as long as i've been around the town and i, I think it's still goes on now where during homecoming week there's a powder puff game and it's juniors oh. versus senior girls yeah 
yeah, when you allow girls to get aggressive like that, it's it's amazing. Well, to especially watch. when They're you just, put classes like it. that, because classes are always you know juniors and seniors uh, like traditionally are like are, are I, natural rivals, well, right? Well, look, yeah. I've seen uh, quite a few <laughs> fights uh, in the real world, and I've seen girl fights, and women can be very. Very aggressive and vicious, like yeah. wanting to rip each other's eyeballs out. You know what I mean? Usually, guys trying to knock each other, but I've seen girl fights where they're reaching for eyeballs. They want to pull someone's eyeball out. I've That's never crazy. done that in a fight. I've never thought to myself, yeah. "I'm going to blind you." Yeah, you know I, mean? I know. I, you. I know. Sal gets really uncomfortable while we stay in the sports world, but I have to like bring up what I saw another article on uh, related to sports, and that was that it came out that the Red Sox and the Astros were caught cheating in the last two World Series. Dude. Wait, how were they? What were they doing? They were. They had a video camera. Camera that was like a hyper one that was actually reading the catcher's signals of the pitch, and then oh. they were relaying the the pitch that was coming to the batter, which oh, is super cheating. Wow! Yeah, and now this now this has been happening in in baseball since the beginning of 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 how they do that with the earpiece to the no signs coaching signs. Okay, so, so then from, they, from they, the so first you, base or third base. Coach? Yeah, you got a third base. I and I, I, I don't know. If but order. I mean, how did they get it? Is what I'm asking. Like, did they have an earpiece or like? No, they they watched it on the camera. Right. Then it. they signaled it to the first baseman. Right. First base. So from signaled. so from the bullpen or if not the bullpen from you know from down the dugout the the main like manager was signaling to the coach. Yes. I mean this all I'm just trying to like logistically yeah, see I mean, how think this about works. It. I mean I, I'm not 100% sure how this played out but this is how I would do it if we were cheating this way. Is yeah. you have somebody who's way far in the stands or in the the bullpen which the bullpen in a lot of stadiums are back in the outfield. Right, right? So you don't really pay attention to that. Exactly. You don't see that and they've got some super telescopic freaking camera that's shooting on the catcher. Mm -hmm. As soon as he gets it he, there's a phone inside the bullpen always. Yeah. So he's probably he's like fastball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fastball. The coach probably sends over to the. Now, how do they? That, that's insane to me. Now, how did they get caught? How did they get caught on this? How would you find the camera? Well, I don't think it's as far as finding the camera. I think it just becomes obvious when the batters are so savvy to all the fucking pitches that are coming. Like they knew. It's you know? like when you're. I at, feel like that you, sport has been cheated like the most out of any other sport. Oh, you know, well, they're just uh, based on like the materials of the ball, the bats. You know, like what the pitcher does when he when he grabs some tar. Or something well, there's an old leg. saying. How's it go? Right? If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Yeah. <laughs> Does that come from baseball? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure baseball is responsible. Who for was that the one? The most cheating. Who was the one baseball player? It was 1970, I think it was, and he play. He hit. He did his, his, his only no hitter. He's a pitcher. Yeah. But he showed up high well, as fuck on acid. On acid. Doc yeah. Rivers or Doc? Oh, oh, uh, God. What's his name? Doc Johnson. Ah, uh, something like that. Play for the Mets. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah, yeah. He, the famous story. Uh, the Mets. It's not Doc Rivers. Yeah, Daryl uh, Strawberry. Doug. I'm, I, I, yeah, maybe you can look all? it up. Like <laughs> Doc uh, Ellis. Doc, Doc Ellis. Lots That's of drugs going through. So there. he. So I read that story a long time ago. So apparently, well, back in the '70s, my gosh, if you read about baseball players, it was like, let's see who can play the most fucked up. It was like a thing. <laughs> but apparently, he was one of the worst on the team, and he went and partied, and was doing meth and dropping acid. And he had a game the next day, but he lost track of time because he didn't go to sleep. He stayed up for 36 hours. And yeah. one of his one of his buddies is like, dude, you're going to miss your game. And he's like, I just I just took two hits of acid. So he went to the game and pitched a no-hitter. <laughs> 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 pitched a no-hitter high as fuck that's on so, acid. That's so, that's so great. Oh, Justin, man. I've been meaning to ask you, uh, and I know we've been holding this conversation for the podcast. I really want to know okay. how your improv uh, class went. Oh, oh yeah. 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 No, I started that. That was a big thing for me for this year. Like I was just like, you know what? I want to do something that's totally <laughs> outside of the norm and uh, something that I feel like will just help <laughs> conversational skills and things that I've always been trying to kind of improve. And you guys have helped me a lot with it. Just being on the podcast and, you know, jabbing at me and shit and putting me on the spot. <laughs> so Whoa. I am yeah, giving you props. You know, <laughs> yeah. it might be backhanded, yeah, but you're, you're welcome. Yeah. No, yeah. I appreciate we'll it. We'll keep up the bull. <laughs> <laughs> keep the bullying happening man it's making me better as a human being yeah. uh so yeah i i started it and um i had no idea what to expect i mean doug kind of told me a little bit he did it before it's called comedy sports yeah and uh it's down here in san jose and so uh it's like monday nights i go down there and i i show up and there's like 25 people and it's so funny because I was just like, I'm not going to know anybody. It's going to be great. I'm going to do my thing. Of course, there uh, somebody in the class like knows Mind Pump and recognizes me immediately. And no he's way. like, dude, Mind oh, Pump no, Justin. No way. Yeah. Now, did that make you more nervous or less nervous? Uh, I, it made me kind of like, 
I was like, oh man, you know, like <laughs> I just, I wanted to be anonymous, you know, like, <laughs> like this is me kind of like acting a fool and, and starting over and trying to be humble and like, just like absorb, you know, and like try and like learn all the techniques and How things. How random. Yeah. It's not even a big class, is it? No, I mean, 25 people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so, what, so what, I want to know about the exercises and like, yeah, so we, you, you know what, it, it, it's, it sounds really silly to talk about because it's like, you, you have to like, just. <laughs> you basically have to conform and be like, okay, I'm doing this. Everybody's doing this. I'm doing this. You know, this is really silly. Uh, but the, I mean, what's great about it is bigger groups of people. Like you can see how like everybody can get into group flow really quickly mm. because like everybody's moving. Everybody has to, you know, try and concentrate on these commands that throws your brain off. Like the whole thing is to like disrupt the way you think. And so like a lot of it was, okay, the, the first thing that we did, we were just walking in patterns and we're just trying to create our own patterns and weaving in and out of everybody. And so it's like, you kind of have to like bump into everybody and like do your thing. And then, and then he's like, okay, basically I want you to walk. So it's almost like red light, green light. It's like, I want you to walk when I say stop. And so you have to, you have, when he says stop, you walk. When he says walk, you know, you stop. Oh, wow. And so that was the first of it. And then it, how hard, it progressed. Now, how, how hard was that for most people? It was hard. It really? was hard for a lot. A lot of people were fucking up. And then, That's and then, but then it got, it, it kept going on top of that. It's like, you know, you had to hop. So when, when he said hop, you had to clap. And then when, when you clap, when you said hop, you had to, wait, I, I fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, then you, when you said clap, you had to hop. So it's, it's like the reverse of all that. And then you're, you're doing all these things. That's brilliant. And trying to figure it out on the fly. That's and actually brilliant because it makes you quick and you really have quick. to be present. And yeah. you get out of, you get out of your mind, like trying to, to rationalize and analyze. You just, you, you're really trying to be there and try like, to train yourself to react. Yeah. Figure it out. So there was a lot of cool drills like that. And like, even, okay, me and you like one-to-one -one here. So right. like, you're going to count, we're, we're going to count the three together. So there's, it's always going to change. So I go one, you go two. two. I go three, you go one. Uh huh. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One. <laughs> okay. So. Right. So you see how that goes, and you and you get faster and faster and faster uh, right. and faster. And so, uh, you just see how much you can progress with things like that. So you're just uh, you're just reacting, you know. So anyway, I, I found it very valuable. Now, like, now, are you? What are you doing it for? In particular, is it to improve your skills in, in uh, when we do video, podcast, or just for the enjoyment of? Yeah, it? Uh, you know what? Like for the enjoyment of it first, but honestly, I feel like it'll help sharpen my skills if we ever do any more live events and things. Where because the thing is, we're we're out there kind of reacting to people asking us questions, yeah. and we're out there. Uh, on the spot. And I, I've always had a little bit of reserve for that, but I, my whole thing this year is just to like get out in front of that and put myself out there and, and be less like, uh, you know, reserved about it. I just want to like react. I want to say something and then deal with it later. So I, <laughs> you know? I've actually been told by several people that those are valuable uh, classes. If you want to learn how to present and communicate to people or to mm -hmm. groups, to do those types of things. Uh, I've been told by several people that I trust. Now, is there, you, you do all these exercises and then is there something that you do afterwards to see if it like, can you can tell that it warms you up or you just do, mm -hmm. is it just straight training? Yeah. Well, I mean, so this is the first class. So it's, it's, it's right. going to become like more like he, he's establishing like the rituals, the patterns of like how we're going to warm up, you know, like stretching wise, like you do all these weird kind of stretches and, and then ways that you're, you're doing these tongue twisters. And so you have to say certain words you know, the whole unique New York, you know, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, but it, but it, there's levels of that. And so like you work your way up to 10 different uh, sayings. And so we got up to five and then we're going to keep adding to that mm -hmm. every time. And then uh, at the end, you, it's really, really good for group. Uh, like, so if I had a company, I would definitely have them go through this because it's like you connect you know, much, much better with other people. Like, I, really do you guys quickly. remember that show? Was it Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah. yeah. That was an improv. It's, and it was hilarious. I used to love that yeah, show. Yeah, me too. And I've always loved that kind of stuff. And and he got into the history of it, you know, and how it is related somewhat to Second City. It's it's related somewhat to Saturday Night Live. It's this, this chicken fried theater, like all these different, um, uh, like, theater uh, uh, you know, that, that, that was out there that people just created to kind of make a sport out of 
the improv side of it. I so I, I think it's extremely valuable. That would be so difficult for me. Oh, I mean, so it would be so hard for now, me, Doug. When you were doing this, or what were your intentions? Were you I, obviously you weren't doing what we're doing right now? So when you were you were doing this well before Justin, what, what were your intentions? Well, I enjoyed doing it. Number one. But some of my motivation was exactly the same as Justin's, was just to get outside of myself, get out of my head, start reacting rather than just thinking too much about what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And that was very valuable. And I ended up performing for the for the comedy sports group uh, on their main stage there for about a year and a half or two years. That's great. But what, what happened, though, was Mind Pump, Got so busy for me, I had to stop doing it. Oh, so it was around you. You were still yeah. kind of doing it when we all first met. When we first started, I was still performing. Oh no, shit! I didn't Sweet. even know yeah. that. I no, did not I know, know that. I uh, know that's great. So I just went to a show here recently, maybe about a month ago, with uh, Brianna, and boy, I just kind of, kind of got the, the desire the to the go back again? up there again. Yeah. You know, you know, Shabby's coming to town next weekend. Not this weekend, but the following weekend, he's here. Who? Sweet, Brandon Shaw. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was texting him yesterday, um, and he wanted. To, we were talking about days. He's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He's here. I know he's hella busy, but I'm like, hey, if you want to come pop, pop on the show, and he said Saturday, but the only thing was Saturdays. I think that's when I take off the Tahoe. So mm. I don't know if we're going to link up with him or not. But if you guys are in town, you should go stop in and go see him. Well, speak, see him. speaking of comedy, how did you guys like that? Uh, the gold, that whole Golden Globes. Oh, we did. We talked about that already. What's his name's presentation? The intro, oh, so yes, good. wasn't that great? Oh, yeah. You see the backlash that's happening? How people are pissed off about really? that? Really? Because oh. I saw nothing but love for the most part. Oh, there were some people that were you know a little bit angry, and it, that, that the Golden Globes. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this by the way. Their meals were 100 percent vegan. Did you guys know that? No, I didn't know. Uh, that. 100% That's vegan obnoxious. meals, yeah. It's the most virtue signaling group of people I could possibly think. Yeah. I can't I can't think of a group that cares more about how what people think about them and wants to show them more yeah. than them at the Golden Globes. Yeah, oh, look how yeah. self-righteous I am. Yeah, but yeah, they did the whole all the whole mid dinner was was vegan. I everybody. was disappointed that Miss Mazel didn't get to, uh didn't win. I know they were nominated but they didn't win. Uh I saw that a show that I'm not even familiar with Fleabag won. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if you guys know what show that Courtney, is. No. Courtney watches that. She says it's really funny. No, really? I've so the, the morning show crushed, which I said that was a phenomenal yeah, a show. show. I love that show. I know Loudest Voices did really good. Chernobyl, I know, one. We said that was really good. Unbelievable has been one that I tried to get you guys to watch too. That's What's the, that one? That's the rape story. It's a true story. It's like a doc it's a docuseries. And it's on this girl that um that was raped and basically they didn't believe her. And it's a it's a really crazy sad story, but it, the way they tell it's really good. Like it's a, and it it come it ends well, so it's a good story. But it was well, well done. Mm. Um, Big Little Lies, I've seen that. That was really that's good. a really good show. Yeah, you I, watched that. I watched the whole thing. The one you guys haven't seen that I was trying to tell Doug to watch is the uh, the Kaminsky method mm. uh, with Michael Douglas. That's really and talk about like now uh, where what is that? What channel is that on HBO? Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, yeah that's oh, Netflix. Oh, really? A lot of stream. Obviously, that, that was like part of the guy's joke too, I, right? That's here. the funny part. Everything is on the streaming networks, you know? That's it's right. like not <laughs> It's not network TV did, anymore did, or did, Hollywood. Did Joker not win an award? Mm. Did, did they not win? No, the but uh, uh, Jojo Rabbit did. Oh, good. Which is good because I, I – didn't it? Or well, I, I don't know. They, okay. they may have. I'm they were sure nominated they for sure. You know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I heard that was terrible. So I did I. I don't watch it. Well, though. now again, I want to watch it because it won. Uh, it was artsy, dude. I mean, it. <laughs> did you make it through? I, I watched the whole thing, but I was just like, I I get why like the artsy people liked it, you know, because it like sort it's of- different. Yeah, it's different. It, it was a spin on an event that happened and, and it had really good dialogue, but like it was just- there was no, I mean, if you're in it for things to happen, it's just like you just watch like barely anything happen and it's just boring. Mm. Yeah. But oh, did you guys, uh, I, I wanted to bring this up. I think this is hilarious. I want to hear what your theories are. So the Pentagon uh, warns military, I'm going to read the title of this article Pentagon warns military personnel against at home DNA tests. So the Pentagon's like, hey, military people, don't do these uh, at home DNA tests. Why do you guys think that the what do you think the true now their motivation what they say is you know oh, that you know that the tests uh you know they could scare you because they tell you you may have a genetic issue when you may not more, more big data collection you don't want to know all that yeah but they didn't even say that it was mainly just hey don't do it because it could influence how you feel if you figure certain things out or whatever i have a different theory what's yours yeah, here here cuz i don't have, i'm lost for one here the, the there is a huge uh, this is a problem in the military where men and women go off to serve and their spouses at home cheat on them 
and they come back and then they get Oh my pregnant. god, you think because of that? I think they they that don't they're want to find babies all over the I place. I think they don't want <laughs> 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 They don't want to do DNA stuff cuz they're going to be like, "Oh, what? shit. Yeah, you're Tom's kid. got four kids yeah, in West Virginia." Oh, yes. Wow. That's what I think. Wow. I think they don't want because that's a big problem. It's a lot of people don't talk about that, but there's a big issue. It's kind of like the thing that gets swept under the rug that you know, you got guys that are uh, away, right, on bases or over across sea or whatever like that for four months at a time it's kind of like yeah when they go to these small towns or like that that happens all yeah the time. that's what i think, mm, I think wow I was, so when i read that i was cracking up i'm like you guys just don't want you don't want more problems well, statistically speaking what is it do you know what the rates are on on infidelity in in the military it's, it, it's supposedly I, high i, I thought, don't know I, I think i heard firefighters are the highest really yeah yeah, yeah as far as professions are concerned that'd that be too. an interesting stat for you to maybe try and find doug because i could be totally talking out the side of my neck and have no idea right mm. but that there used to be an old uh what is it the saying goes uh Firefighters cheat, cops beat. That's wow, yeah. that's terrible. Yeah, well, that I mean, st- a, oh. statistically, that's what I mean. Fuck, I mean, yeah. uh, that's what it used to. You, they used to say that the the statistics on that were really high. I don't know if this is true anymore, and I'm sure I just offended all kinds of firefighters and cops, <laughs> yeah. you know, that are fucking good men, you know, and women. So I'm not trying to talk so, shit or anything. So Doug just pulled something up and said, well, "The here, gym had those same statistics." Oh, here you go, right there. Terrible. Here, here were the top twelve careers of, for infidelity from a survey. Uh, so men, social work. Uh, for women, politics, men, at what, so agriculture, arts and entertainment, legal, education, and then the trades. Wow, men and edu- so teachers. Really? Wow. That's kind of, or professors. It was the same difference. Pro- well, I, you say teachers. Geez, that sounds terrible. It's fucking that's seventh ter- grade teachers. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, ter- you can be a seventh grade teacher and you can be fucking a college student. Good it doesn't mean- Lord. Medicine is the top field for female um, infidelity. So it used to be, yeah, medicine, gyms, and uh, firefighters. That's what I- I don't see gyms up there at all. This, see, that that can't survey. be right because tra- I read another article on trainer. It's like trainers. Infidelity. Look at the it's article. Like, it has, has a picture of Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, politicians probably win for sure, right? Oh, Pol- yeah. Politicians have to win. That's that, all coming out. Yeah, and entertainment, I would think. Okay, I, okay. so I'm not thinking about entertainment either, so I could yeah. see how that would be massive. Mm. But uh, the, I saw, I remember I read an article on, on trainers and like, it was like some crazy number, like 70% of trainers I've have slept with their clients. I've stuff. heard that too. Now, I've trained a lot of trainers, and um, I definitely know a lot of trainers I would who, agree with that. Who, yeah. who cheated. Now, that being said, there's a little bit of a – they're young. A lot of them were young. Not very many of them were married. So a lot of them were cheating, but they weren't married. You know what I'm saying? They were – although the people they were cheating with were probably married. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, so how does that – yeah, I don't so, know. Yeah. Trying to defend trainers. I just right? imagine, yeah, yeah, you try yeah. to – I imagine actors because, you know, you're you're in these roles. You're – you're like making physical, like you're kissing scenes, you're yeah. doing sex scenes, all this stuff. It's so like, you're not, yeah, you're already there, right? You're already there. Yeah. You're, no, you're, you're, so like, you what, could, what's this, you, you know, outside you, of work? Tell your mom, your, your wife, you're practicing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like how do you deal just, with that as a spouse? We're just practicing an upcoming yeah. scene. Now, and now yeah. let's, let's, okay, exactly. now, here comes a scene where you guys have uh, dirty sex. Yeah, we uh, got to make so, it look real. <laughs> oh, oh, we got to take, uh, you know, cut, we got to take that again, cut, we got to take that again. Honey, yeah. you know I'm a method actor. Yeah. <laughs> that's terrible oh dude yeah. dude i gotta tell you guys about the, work ex- on my craft. the experiment i'm gonna do uh on my kids well what's that so um my kids just sometimes they piss me off so bad <laughs> so we're working with magic spoon right so for the listeners who don't know magic spoon is a company that makes a, uh, cereals like kids cereals so like that's yeah. kid inspired yeah cereals. like fruity yeah, yeah. you know fruity flavors or or you know cinnamon toast crunch type flavors and it's the box looks like it's a kid's cereal right. and it legit tastes Tastes like a kid's cereal. It's amazing, and the macros are ridiculous. Like they are super good. Oh, like a like it's super high protein. Like you could have a, easily you can do a serving, not including the milk. That'll give you thirty six. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I get I get a box of it, and uh, I go to give it to my kids. Now the problem is you don't feed your kids cereal on a regular basis, and I don't give them this so kind of cereal. So my kids are automatically right. they're suspicious. What's this? Mm. Uh, what, are you're you allowing this, Dad? Yeah. Why are you giving yeah. us the this cereal? I'm like, oh, just try it out. It's a it's a healthier version. Fucked up already. Already yeah. fucked oh, up. Oh man, you, so, said, you so, said healthier. Yeah, dude. So now my kids are just Mistake. like yes, and I've done this before. So I, how are you gonna trick them? Well, hold on. So I've done this before with my kids because like my kids are. They're also food snobs when it comes to Italian food. So if I give my kids <laughs> lasagna yeah. or pizza that's not made by their grandma or their mom or somebody yeah, that's ruined. It yeah. doesn't matter how delicious it is. This is not lasagna. This is not it's pizza. Just a cardboard. So yeah, now so what I have learned to do is if I make a different kind of pizza, I don't call it that. You know, I'll say, Oh, would you like some cheese bread or something weird like that? And then yeah. they'll eat it. 
So I fucked up already. They tried it. I know they liked it because I can tell, but they're all like, well, I don't want healthy cereal, whatever, you know. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a box of shitty, crappy kid cereal. You know, the the, the high sugar, low like protein. Na- name brand one. Yeah, like garbage, like Fruit Loops or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to empty the bag out. Oh. I'm going to fill it up with magic oh, cereal. I like it. Then I'm going to have them eat it. And then after they eat it, I'm going to film it and watch them all. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Surprise, <laughs> motherfucker. You know? <laughs> You're eating healthy cereal. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, you know. I'm You've feeling, been punked. Yeah. I love that idea, dude. Yeah, so we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll see what happens. But, you know, just, your kids, Justin, are. Oh, maybe, they love it. They don't yeah, care. No, they're they're all about it. And again, like I used to allow like for for them to pick out cereals when we go on vacation, and so we go down the aisles, and you'd see them grabbing the Reeses and the Fruit Loops or whatever it was for for the week. And uh, you know that was one of those things where, okay, I'm just gonna replace that and and put the Magic Spoon out there instead. And they totally adopted it. So yeah. I don't know. They probably have a palate for it. Well, I mean, dude, I, I, again, if I didn't mess up with the introduction, there's no way my kids would have known the difference There's no no way the 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 fruity ones i didn't to, call it healthy the fruity so. ones are to me they're all good but the fruit ones are would be hard to tell i would i would challenge someone to do a test where they put dude the fruity is the best yeah, yeah what, what trips me fruity out about it is that when they first sent us the sample and we tasted it i'm like oh this is a a miracle of modern scientific engineering <laughs> I, know. I thought for sure when i looked at the ingredients there was going to be all kinds of like exotic chemicals and shit to make this right. high protein, low sugar, low carb, you know, cereal that tastes like kids cereal. But Adam, hand me the box. I'm going to read the ingredients because this is the yeah. thing that tripped me out. So I, I look at the side of it. Just I'm, full of scientific oh, wizardry. It's not. It's, it's, it's a protein blend. So it's milk protein isolate, whey protein isolate, coconut oil, tapioca flour. They're sweet. It's sweetened by monk fruit and stevia, chicory root fiber, cocoa powder. This is the chocolate one and salt. That's it. Wow. So either they're lying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, don't exactly. know what the, I don't know how they're doing it. But anyway, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. No, it's amazing. First question is from Alexis Swayze. How do you cut without ruining your metabolism? You know, I, when people say things- That's our like, fault right there. I know, oh, I know. Yeah, I, you know. It's good though, though, so we can address it because, you know, I, I don't want to be a part of that, that uh, you know, oh, your metabolism is broken or your you, you, your metabolism in Sal's, I've yeah. heard Sal say this multiple times. I always times. have to reverse how I'm eating. It's mm-hmm. doing what you, you want it to do. It's actually a health, uh, it's, the, it's, it's a, a sign of a healthy metabolism. Right, it's responding. It's adapting. Yeah, it's adapting. Yeah. It's responding to what you're doing. Now, the problem is that just most people approach- weight loss wrong and so they and they just really they put themselves in a less advantageous place you know they they go into the new year they want to lose you know 15 or 20 pounds and the first thing that they do and they come off of not exercising eating like garbage and then they go in the new year and it's like boom i'm gonna have two salads a day and a, a meal of chicken breast and broccoli and rice and that's it and then i'm gonna fucking go to the gym for an hour run on the treadmill for a half hour lift weight and like or go to my favorite class of circuit training and what happens is you you give the body way less calories than what it was just used to. You start pushing it and uh, it, trying to put out more energy. And all the metabolism does is it becomes efficient. It goes, oh, wow, she or he is not going to feed me very many calories and they're going to push me. I need to really slow down and conserve energy because I don't know if I'm going to be getting my ass kicked like this every single day and only fed this. And so your metabolism is doing exactly what you told it it's to do. Called, it's called metabolic adaptation. And again, <laughs> just like Adam said, um, it, it, it this process evolved for thousands of years where humans, you know, we went for long periods of time without food. We needed to move a lot. For most of human history, uh, it, life was relative, was pretty damn active, especially in comparison to modern life. It was very active. If you wanted water, there wasn't a faucet right there. You had to walk to get the water and, and bring it back. If you wanted food, you had to kill it or, or pick it and find it. You had to cook it or crush it so you could digest it. Um, you, 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 you didn't sit very often. You probably sat at the end of the day. Uh, maybe around a fire. So you were active and food was scarce. And so we evolved to have these metabolisms that learned how to be very efficient, which is a very, this is a good thing. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this. The only problem is today we live in a completely different environment. We live in an environment where uh, food is extremely available and it's hyper palatable. You could have pretty much any type of food you want available to you at a very, very low cost, and you can have it available to you in a very short period of time. Now we're at the point, in fact, you could order 
whatever you want, not even have to get up. It comes right to your door, and boom, you've got a delicious, high-calorie uh, meal and low activity or whatever. So we live in an environment now where we want a metabolism, where it becomes beneficial to have a fast metabolism. In the past, again, for most of human history, it was advantageous to have a slower, more efficient, thrifty metabolism. Well, today, that's the opposite. If you have, a, if you have an efficient metabolism, uh, you're more likely to gain more weight um, and you can't eat as much and get away with it. So how do we deal with this? What do we do? Uh, well, there's a couple strategies. One, um, when you reduce your calories, don't do it so dramatically for so long. So right. you don't want to do a dramatic cut for, for too, too long. If you were to answer this very like simplistically, that would be it, right? Don't go for too long and too hard. That's number one. Number two, though, this is an important one, is you have to send a counter signal. You have to send a signal to the body that says, hey, we need to uh, we need to do things that prioritize a faster metabolism. Now, it's an indirect effect, but what you're essentially doing when you work out, if you do it properly, is you're telling the body, I need strength and muscle. When you're sending a signal to build strength and muscle, the side effect of that is a hotter, faster metabolism. Because in order to get stronger, you have to build more muscle, and more muscle burns more calories. So your body's getting the signal that says, hey, calories are low. However, we need lots of strength. So what ends up happening when you lift weights properly while you're cutting your calories get leaner is you either A, get a metabolism that doesn't adapt quite as much. It doesn't slow down quite as much because you need to build muscle. Or B, if you do it really well, you actually can do the opposite and cause a speed up in the metabolism. But that also requires you not cutting your calories so much. In fact, sometimes you want to bump them a little bit first with the muscle building to give yourself a fast metabolism. Or, or run a mini cut followed by a mini bulk, mm -hmm. right? So don't stay, like to your point of not staying in a cut very long, which, you know, uh, for me, that means nowhere longer, between, somewhere between two and six weeks, six being very long, uh, two being pretty short. So somewhere I like to fall in between that. I'm going to interrupt that cut with at least a one week uh, surplus or at least caloric maintenance week. So if you are somebody who's trying to uh, reduce body fat and you figure out that your body stays the same at about 2000 calories. And so you start eating, you know, 1700 calories a day to lose weight. You've been doing that for about three weeks, four weeks or so. You feel like progress is stalled. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on a diet for the next week that's more like 2,000 to 2,200 calories every single day for a good solid week. And we're going to focus a lot on trying to build strength during that time and then come back again to the, the cut and maybe less dramatic, right? So you come from 2,200, maybe you just drop down to 18 or 1,900. And ultimately, my goal is really, can I lean you out uh, while I also slowly teach your body to be able to eat more calories? I mean, that's why no matter what your goal is, whether it's trying to build or to lose body fat, I start everybody in a... a you know, at least a calorie maintenance. Like I, if I, if I assess your diet, even if it's bad, right, bad food or, you know, mm -hmm. high calorie, uh, you know, empty calorie type foods, alcohol, fast food, things that aren't ideal for us. And I see that you're eating 3000 calories and your goal is to lose 15 pounds. I'm not going to start you on your diet at 25 or 20. I'm going to start at 3000 calories, mm -hmm. but I'm going to just change around the foods that you're eating. I'm going to give you more nutrient dense foods, but keep your calories the same and in, introduce exercise. That alone should send a signal to the body to build muscle and get leaner. And my real goal is actually to increase calories to help speed the metabolism up. Yeah. Remember this, it, it honestly was not that long ago. It was a blink of an <laughs> eye. When you look at all the, the, the amount of time that modern humans have been around on earth, it wasn't that long ago that have that we suffered from the effects of not of having too little calories. Humans died, and there was lots of malnutrition. Those were the big, two of the biggest killers of uh, of humans was we just didn't have enough, and so our bodies evolved to adapt to that. Now today is a very different time. Today in modern societies, very few people die from not having enough calories. Far more people, far more. In fact, the largest killer, the number one killer of people in modern societies is because they have too much. So a great buffer against that is to develop and build a body that can burn those calories off. You know, it's interesting. When you look at the studies on carbs, fats, saturated fats, sugar, it's, it's really interesting. In the context of a low-calorie diet, you could get away with a lot. You, in the context of a high-calorie diet, lots of saturated fat becomes bad for a lot of people. Lots of sugar becomes bad 
for a lot of people. When your calories are low uh, or when you're burning more than you're eating or burning as much as you're eating, I should say, rather than low calories, those things don't become so much of a problem. A faster metabolism in today's day and age is a phenomenal buffer against that, which is why the most, uh, the number one way you should be exercising today, if you live in the modern world. Now, if you're a hunter-gatherer, this may not apply to you, but I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not a hunter-gatherer. Otherwise, you'd be a weird one with a cell phone and a, you know, <laughs> and podcast access. Um, you need to lift weights, go to the gym, and get stronger. Here's the other thing with diet, uh, high protein diets tend to even when people do the hard cut and do lots of cardio. High protein diets also seem to contribute to a better in, in terms of modern life adaptation of the metabolism. So I, it doesn't necessarily slow down as much. And it's probably because of, there's an indirect effect. High protein diets tend to preserve more muscle and build more muscle. So uh, there you go. So again, the ruined metabolism, you know, I know we use that term uh, in, in the past uh, to kind of illustrate our point. It's not a broken metabolism. It's doing exactly what it wants to do. But because you live in the modern world, you want to be lean and you want to be able to Enjoy the food it's around less you. less advantageous. We want a fast metabolism. Next question is from Shannon Shifty. What can I do about wrist pain? My wrists always hurt after certain lifts, such as front squats. Is there a way to strengthen my wrists, or is it a mobility issue? Mm. You know, I went through a period of time, um, and I know, Justin, you did a lot of stuff on this, too, I because did, yeah. you, because you, you do big, a lot of front squats with that front rack position. Big wrist guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's a big wrist Lots guy. Lots of wristing. Uh, um, I, I did this for a while because I went through a period of time where I was trying to do, be able to do uh, lots and lots of push-ups. I had read a book. Um, I can't remember the name of the book, but it was like a fitness for martial arts book and, and push-ups have always been big mm -hmm. uh, in martial arts. And the problem when I did a lot of push-ups is I noticed I had to switch to to like so those handles where my hands were in a neutral position because if I just put my hands flat on the floor, it would start to hurt my wrist. And I thought, oh, I just, I'm just going to use these handles all the time. Then I read this article um, that talked about uh, how to prevent that. And what the guy in the article said was, as he said, when you do push-ups on the ground, grip the floor. Mm -hmm. So now you can't grip the floor. Obviously, I'm not actually taking a grab of the floor. But what I was doing is I was just activating my fingers and the muscles of my forearms. And I noticed my my wrist pain went away. And right. I didn't really think much of it. Later on, as I was training clients and I would teach them this, I realized why this helped alleviate pain. It wasn't because I was grabbing the floor. It was because taking some of the pressure off the joint. That's it. Yes. Yeah, because when I'm in a when you're distributing the force, when you're in a a, a position where you relax, you're putting all the stress on the joint. That's it. It's the ligaments of the joint that are supporting me. It's yeah. not yeah. the muscle. Yeah. So when you want to work on any kind of mobility, mm -hmm. especially wrist mobility, you want to you want your muscles to be able to support you in various positions. You you don't want your joint. Yeah, you have to. You, and that's a great illustration. I mean, you think of that when you're squatting. You don't want to rest. You know, all that 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 force like down there in the hips, and uh, you know, put that kind of pressure there. Uh, it's the same thing with the wrists, and and yeah, that I mean, that's a great way to look at it. I, I used to also grip, uh, you know, use towels and things to really help enhance, you know, those muscles and ligaments to respond and get them to strengthen uh, by using various techniques, and you know, even with the fist doing push-ups on my fist, and then like really squeezing, uh, you know, uh, a tight, tight fist as I was doing push-ups. It's just really about getting them to respond and create uh, more recruitment there. Uh, to help uh, you know distribute that force yeah. out. You want a, a great way to work on because this guy's this or this girl, sorry, said uh, the front squats bother them. So first off, you can change your grip on a front squat. So you can do the bodybuilder style, hands crossed. But of course, that doesn't address the actual issue. That's just replacing it. Um, in the meantime, you want to be able to activate the muscles of your forearms while they're in that flexed front rack uh, position. So what I just said with the push-ups is actually a great way to do that. When you get on the floor, don't you don't need to do a push-up. Just get in a plank position. And then while you're in that position, try to grab the floor. Spread your fingers mm -hmm. and, and grab the floor so that you can activate those muscles and practice holding that position. Create tension there. Then when you get into the front rack position, do the same thing. Hands underneath the, the barbell. Rather than resting in that position, activate your hands a little bit as if you're trying to lift the, yeah, the barbell and, up. Yeah, and too, and I know this is a little bit outside of like what form uh, your wrist is going to be in, uh, but to also apply towels, like for me to, to train in, in, in that position in, in a front-loaded squat, I would put two different like small hand towels and I would actually grip it in a neutral position and I would squeeze and lift my 
my elbows up. So that way, yeah, I was connecting to that a little bit more, uh, but then work my way closer and closer to the bar to where I could actually then start to get my fingers underneath the bar and allow that to happen. So we, little by little, you're grabbing little by little. closer down the, the, the towel. Yes. We did a YouTube better. video on that. We did a regression to the front squats. Oh, we did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we used Great. the towels. You know, one of my favorite wrist mobility and hand mobility movements that I never really used a lot of, but we put in our map. Rice buckets. Yeah, OCR yeah, program. That's, that's the only thing I was going to add to everything you guys said is I'm surprised neither one of you said anything about it was the rice buckets. I think that's that was a game changer for my clients that had carpal tunnel, had any sort of forearm I issue. wish I'd have known that. I didn't use it beforehand, oh, but yeah. I started using it. I was like, oh my God, I could totally feel everything get connected it, and, and respond. It's an old martial art uh, uh, method of strengthening the fingers, hands, and, and, the, and the wrist. So here's what you do. If, it's super simple. You get yourself a bucket, fill it up with rice, stick your hand all inside the rice, and then move your hand and your fingers through full ranges of motion, flexing, extended, mm -hmm. open the fingers, yeah. close, and just practice moving. And it's harder than it sounds because obviously the rice provides resistance, um, which is great now. You're strengthening all the different ranges of motion. Great mobility exercise. Next question is from Sugar Shane. Should you train powerlifting, performance, bodybuilding, and corrective in the same session? You know what? This reminds me of a DM that I want to address publicly because I know this happens to us. And CrossFit, you forgot that. <laughs> uh, we recently we recently talked about um, you know that we recommend that people do uh, you know all low reps in a phase and then transition to yes. you know high reps and and so I got a DM from one of our longtime listeners and he's like you know you guys should have Joe Bennett on the show which is hypertrophy coach really like Joe uh, puts out a lot of really good content good dude uh, respect a lot of his information. And he's like, he completely disagrees. His program has, you know, high reps and low reps in every one. You guys should have him on the show and talk with us. I'm like, first of all, I'm not going to bring someone in the show to argue something that I don't disagree with him. It's not that he's wrong, we're right, or the other way around. Uh, you're really splitting hairs in, in arguing something like this. Like, can you do these things in a single session? When we give advice, uh, we're always thinking of the general population uh, and... I'm thinking of teaching somebody uh, the proper way to train so they can learn. And, you know, one of the best things to do is to, you know, isolate adaptations like this so a client can feel and see the response. Oh, when I train like, like in a power lifting phase or I train in a strength phase and I'm lifting these types of exercises or these types of reps, these are the adaptations. These are the things I notice about my body. This is what I see changing. This is what I feel and it's much easier to teach somebody that. Now, if you're an advanced person, does that mean that you can't, you know, throw high reps, low reps, or throw power lifting with strength in there, throw mobility into all one session? Of course you can. Yeah. And is it is it better or worse than doing it the way that we're, we're telling you? You're splitting hairs on the difference. I look at it, I mean, it's very parallel on some level to MMA training. And oh, God, great point. Because it's like, yeah, you could, you could definitely train MMA. Like, you could do it all at once. But, you know, are you going to be that great at the skill of each one of those boxing, you know, kickboxing, jujitsu, wrestling? Like, are you going to teach, you know, the proper jab mixed in within like a judo throw, right? Right after that, right? It just that's that's ridiculous. No, a hundred percent. So here, analogy. so here's here's my so two things. First, corrective exercise you can put in. I actually recommend doing corrective exercise at the beginning of everything of every whatever yeah. you're doing. We call that priming. Maps prime is an example of that. Now here's the deal: the people that should that can get away with powerlifting, performance, bodybuilding, different modalities, and warm workout are advanced. Right, they're advanced people. To use the MMA analogy, if you're a beginner, you're better off taking a class that's just wrestling. And learning that, then taking a class that's just jujitsu, and then taking a class that's just whatever. If you want to compete in a sport that combines powerlifting, performance, and bodybuilding all at once, then sure, you can train that way. But if you're trying to improve your fitness long term, you're better off focusing on each one at a specific time for a period of time so that you can learn the skill of it. And here's the thing a lot of people don't, don't consider this. There's a mentality that goes around different forms of training. It's not just exercise. When you're powerlifting, there is a very different feel and mentality to how you lift than when you bodybuild. Yes, you're, you're lifting weights both times. You're training the muscles both times. But when you go into powerlift, you're resting for long periods. You're trying to maximize your force and maximize your leverage. 
Okay, in many ways that's counter to bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, you're trying to you're not trying to maximize your leverage. You're trying to feel the muscle. You're trying to squeeze it. In some cases, you're trying to minimize the leverage. You're trying to make the exercise feel even harder. That's a comp and you're resting in shorter periods. That's a totally different mentality. When I go into my workout and I know I'm gonna power lift, totally different mentality. I even play different music than when I'm gonna go do bodybuilding. Now I'm advanced and I could get away with doing it all in one workout, but you do this to somebody who hasn't lifted for three or four or five years. They're not going to get the same results. It's better to have to stick in a three to four week period or longer in each one of these. Learn the mentality, learn the skill, understand it, then move to the next one. And then over time, if you want to combine them, go for it. And that was the point I was trying to make to this kid is I'm not going to have people on our show that are, that I think are really smart fitness, other fitness people that you know write a program a certain way and that's their philosophy. Like, And I have no intentions to bash with them. I'm just telling you that between the three of us, you've got – over 60 years of experience training tons of pe normal people that are trying to get in shape. And, you know, the way we talk about, the way we program and phase things and, and the way we do it, uh, it's not like we're trying to debate the science of somebody else and how they put something together. It's that, you know, we have found that this is one of the best ways to help people and teach people. That doesn't mean if you're, if you're, and I know the person who was mentioned, it was an advanced lifter. It's a kid who's been lifting for quite some time now. He's in good shape understands programming pretty well. And, you know, I think he was looking for the entertainment side of listening to, you know, a bunch of smart guys argue over whose modality. You know what would end up happening? We'd, we'd agree. Yeah, we would just we'd agree. agree. I know Joe. Joe's a smart guy. He's a very smart guy. And if, if I guarantee if he's list he listens to what we just said right now, he would say, oh yeah, that makes total sense. Same way if I'm sure if he presents why he does it the way he does it, we go, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Great. You know what I'm saying? It's a, and the, the difference is so, uh, you know, minor in the, in the grand scheme of things when it comes to getting results for people that it's, it's, it's a silly thing to have somebody on the show to debate something like that. And it's questions like these that, you know, people hear things that we say and then they probably hear from some other professional or somebody else who they, they respect in the space and they've wrote something that probably combines everything. Oh, it's the super duper unicorn workout and you've got <laughs> power building this, this and this and it's all put into one and you get all the benefits of this. And it's like, OK, could you do that? Sure. Um, but when I know from my experience training people that there's, there's a better approach for, for behavioral reasons to get them consistent, to get them to understand and learn. But fuck, if you're a black belt in performance training, you're a black belt in bodybuilding, you're a black belt in corrective, and you're a black belt in powerlifting, by all means, have fun. Fucking put them all together if you want that to. unicorn workout will fuck you up. Yep. The next question is from Andrew Reed. There's a lot of controversy surrounding the use of multivitamins. I take one of the best greens powders on the market, and my nutrition is fairly diverse. Is supplementing with a multivitamin necessary? And if so, when and why? So hmm. vitamins okay. and minerals uh, are essential. Many of them are essential, meaning you need to consume them or take some of them um, in order to, to thrive, and lacking any of them can cause lots of health problems. This is, a lot of people know this. This is why multivitamins are popular. But a lot of people don't know the following. Taking too much of certain nutrients uh, or minerals can also cause lots of problems. Now, here's the problem I have with a multivitamin. It's everything. It's you're, you're nuking the problem. Now, what ends up happening a lot of times with people who take multivitamins is they, sure, they cover bases, many of which they didn't need to cover in the first place. They're going in blind. They have no idea. And oftentimes they cause, they're, they're actually taking too much of certain nutrients yeah. because they've got this multivitamin over here. Plus they eat a lot of this particular food. Then they take the supplement over here. That's also fortified. Then they oh, eat this breakfast you're addressing cereal. one deficiency, but you're overwhelming the body with all these other uh, minerals and, and nutrients. And especially, you're especially if you're a person who's taking multivitamins and then you're taking a bunch of other performance supplements, bars, and shakes because most of those bars, shakes, and they're all fortified. And everything's fortified. Yeah, yeah exactly. Inside of it. So you're really, and that's what I would find. I'd find the, the same person who buys into the multivitamin is also the same person who's buying into the bars, the shakes, and everything else, and they're just getting they're getting an abundance yeah. of all that. And some of that yeah. can become more acidic. is better. Yeah, and yes. you're and you're totally and here's the thing: you're totally blind. So if you want to maximize your supplement intake, especially vitamins and minerals, test them. Yeah. Go get tested and see what you lack, and then supplement with what you need. It'll blow your mind at how effective that is and how much of an impact that'll have on you. Taking too much of things can have negative effects. You just don't know when you just take a, again, you're nuking the problem with all these vitamins and minerals. You need to know what you need 
in order to supplement uh, properly. And then if you want to go deeper, you, then you look for what foods provide those things. Mm -hmm. Right, because that's the that's the I, best. That's the mm -hmm. ideal. The first you go, you get a test, and you find out, oh, I'm deficient on X, Y, and Z. Okay, where can I get X, Y, and Z in whole foods? And then your goal is, oh, how can I implement this into my lifestyle on a more regular basis? And then if I don't, I have this supplement to help me out with that, dude. The okay, so here's here's a a great statistic: the 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 odds or the instances of overdosing on nutrients is astronomically more high in people who take supplements versus people who eat food. So in other words, you see far more toxicity from too much, you know, vitamin A mm. or iron or, you know, whatever from people who take supplements. Almost it almost never happens from people who get it from food. You can eat extremely vitamin rich foods mm. and it's much more difficult to do that because they just don't have the concentrations and usually what balanced with with fiber and other things like coming from the plant. Yes, so like here's a great example. So we know that anti antioxidants <laughs> found in foods uh, help prevent the oxidation uh, of cells in the body. They fight free free radicals. They've got all these health benefits and so People who consume diets that are high in antioxidants have lower instances of all kinds of you know uh, chronic diseases, heart disease, and cancers and that stuff. So of course, people are like, "Oh, antioxidants, good for me. I'm going to buy antioxidant supplements." The antioxidant supplements cause lots of problems for lots of people because they're at, they're at, they're at doses that you would never find in food, yeah, unnatural, and they don't con they don't contain cofactors that foods have that actually can you know balance out a lot of the antioxidants. So they did studies where People who had cancer, you know, they gave them high doses of antioxidants. You know what ended up happening? It strengthened the cancer. This doesn't happen when you mm. eat foods that are high in antioxidants, for example. Or you take all these antioxidants, you slam down inflammation so much you get problems from that. So my point with this is a multivitamin can be very be beneficial or it can be a big problem. You have no idea. Or it could do nothing. Too. Yeah, or do nothing. You have no idea unless you test yourself and know what nutrients you're, you're lacking and know what you should take. You're really it's it's like it's like a and that's why there's studies that actually show people who take multivitamins. There are some studies that show people who take multivitamins have worse health. Mm. And then there's studies that show that they're that they have better health. That's why it's mixed because I think sometimes people who are taking mm. these multis are just overdosing their bodies with certain nutrients causing deficiencies as a result. Like too much zinc for example can cause a copper deficiency. Mm. Too much iron can be poisonous to the body. Too much a, vitamin A can be poisonous. Even vitamin D and other nutrients that we yeah, know are magnesium, yeah, are, are important. Yeah. Can cause uh, lots of calcium. You know, for for a while there, people were taking shit tons of calcium because they were like, "Oh, calcium builds bones. I need to strengthen my bones. Take lots of calcium, causing heart problems." Because mm -hmm. that's not really how it works. Right? Versus eating foods that are high in calcium, which tends to have these bone protecting effects. So, test yourself, see what nutrients you're lacking, and then go from there. Would be my approach versus taking, you know, a freaking nuke approach and just taking them all. Beautiful. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. They're all totally free. It's got some good stuff there. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.